Good evening, baseball fans. It is Thursday, October 24th, otherwise known as World Series Eve. Apparently, World that's Series what... Eve. Ha World happy Series World Eve. Series Eve to you and yours. Shut up, Siri. No one's talking to you. Oh, we said series, I... not Siri. Uh, she, she's very confused. Susie. I've been waiting too long for baseball. Yeah. A little anxious. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Susie. That is Kelsey. This is Bourbon and Baseball, all the balls edition. I know that you guys have been just waiting with bated breath for our World Series preview. And who are we to deny you of the greatness that is Kelsey and I on this episode? You're welcome. The teams that we so desperately wanted and predicted made it all this way. So, of course, we're here to show up and <laughs> get really pumped about it. <laughs> yeah, so if you are not watching on the YouTube currently, if you are audio only, go to this moment in time on the YouTubes. I'm showing off my I Hope Both Teams Lose shirt that the Ram Shirts has so graciously sent me. I bought some other shirts and he randomly sent me this shirt because he knew he's prophetic. Apparently he knew that I was going to need it at some point in time. Who knew it was going to be this soon? Kels, are you going to be hate tweeting along for the World Series? Here's the thing. I think I've let go of some of my hatred, b mostly because I just love baseball so much. And the fact of the matter is there are some amazing players that we're going to get to watch. As long as it's a good matchup and we're seeing good baseball, uh, that's what I'm going to care about at this point. But I think I've definitely come around to to feel like I I was going to I really thought I was going to have a hard time and just feel like I wanted both teams to lose. But I think I have a, a pretty strong allegiance now. And my feelings have led me to be Team Dodgers for this Dodgers-Yankees World Series. How about you? Where are you at? Are you still just like seeing red or is there anything you're looking forward to? We're going to get into it. But first, before we really get into it and really deep dive, dive deep, I got to give the people the rated R warning because this sure. is, in fact, a rated R podcast. The E does not stand for excellence. It stands for explicit and it is explicit because there will be 4,003 cuss words. Even my dogs are jumping in on this. They also have opinions. But if you are, but they, I think they are. If strong adult language is not your jam, that is okay. Get that all on out of here and go find another less fun podcast. He's really getting into it tonight. And he also wants you to stay here. If you don't, that's okay. He's not the boss of you. I'm not the boss of you. But just put some earphones in. Earphones? Earbuds? Headphones? I don't know. I'm old. Anyhow. Put some of those on, make sure that the kiddos are not around and stick around because we are, in fact, a good time. But Kels, I had thought that I had made my decision because I made my decision on the last podcast, right? Yeah. I said, you you had posed the question, who do I want to win? And I said very easily, it was going to be, in fact, the Dodgers because I needed shirtless Kevin Kiermeyer pictures. Yeah, I've that's got to be a perk here. That is the only thing that I was like. Yes, that's that is what I want. I have decided that I, in fact, want neither one of these motherfucking teams to win because not only are they the two teams that I pretty much despise wholeheartedly ever, but I can be objective and admit that there are very good players on said teams. However, how in the actual fuck, Kels, are these two teams playing each other and yet still talking shit about the Astros. I, it is the week of the World Series. You are getting ready to play a whole other team. The Astros right. are not even Astros here. been out of it. Old news. What to we, bad. we have been sitting on our fucking couches, apparently enjoying Cancun. Why are you still talking about the Astros? I just, I don't understand it. I have, in fact, renewed my hatred of the Yankee organization overall because Brian Cashman we have some serious words. I watched a whole documentary about the 04 Red Sox last night, and apparently there was a whole ass microphone in the fucking ceiling that Pedro Martinez and the other pitchers for the Red Sox just pulled out of the ceiling. But it's okay. It's okay. That was allowed back then. When the letter came down and when Rob Manfred was like, hey, guys, tap, tap, you can't do that anymore, they stopped. Brian Cashman. Okay, that's fine. You want to talk about 2017? What about 2019? What about 2022 when the Astros fucking swept you in four games? That's fine. You want to talk about the Astros? I don't understand why we're talking about the Astros when, in fact, we are out. So I have now decided that I want both teams to lose. That can't be a thing. That's I understand. Fair. That's fair. I will only, however, be rooting for Kevin Kiermaier 
who we'll see, I don't know, four who innings of playing time probably. Yeah, might get a net bat or right? two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tommy Edmond. Shout Absolutely. out. Half Korean brother. Big G and Little G mm-hmm, for the mm-hmm. Yankees. Mm-hmm, yep. That if for some reason people are like, who in the fuck is that? That is Giancarlo Stanton and Glaber Torres. And of first. course, the jungle cat himself. Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Luke Weaver. Those are the only, what is that, five? This is not a math pod, so I can't count apparently. Yeah. Those are the only five players that I will be happy if they do anything. So basically, just those players need to do the good things, and I hope everybody else strikes out. Does yeah. not do the things. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I'd be okay if Tommy Edmond and say Oscar Hernandez are the only ones that that bring in runs and everyone else does nothing. That's actually what I would like. But yeah, I don't we, know because there's just too many reasons to hate both of them. Like <laughs> I actually love that the Dodgers have their little 2020 title and that's all they have, and it's not really real. And I love that. We're not going to have that anymore if they win. But then I also love that the Yankees have won 27 times, but they haven't won in the last couple of decades. So (laughs) I'd really like that. 15 years, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Again, not a math pod, but over a decade. I would like that to be two whole decades. Let's just keep it going. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to just shower myself in haterade, but Yes, there's too many reasons to not want either team to win. And I think, okay, it's always really weird, right? Because the players actually, like the players union is happy when these top payroll teams get into the playoffs and go far. And their theory of spending the most money is proven because the the players are going to get more money. And that's something that we're obviously in favor of. But at the same time, like, there there's only so many teams there's only certain teams that are ever going to be able to spend that money and it really just plays into the complete and total disparity that there is between all of the teams and the ridiculousness that goes with all of these contracts and bidding wars over the players and stuff so I don't know as much as I'm all for every player getting the ultimate bag the way that it plays out on the field is not really I guess, good for baseball and good for baseball fans. I'm I'm not saying that very well, but I think you know what I mean. Right. I think that this World Series is going to be the most watched World Series in the last decade, maybe two. Yeah. Yeah. And those casual fans that watch other sports that are football people first or basketball people first or whatnot, I think they will be tuned in to this specific World Series because it is literally Clash of the Titans, Godzilla versus King Kong. I will let you draw your yeah. own conclusions to which team is which in that analogy. But the fact that the casual, I say that in quotes, casual baseball fan is going to be tuned into this World Series because of the two teams. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to break all kinds of records. And I'm just talking about here in the United States. I'm not even... We're not Mm. even counting. The Japanese numbers are just going to put it way over the fucking top. Absolutely. But that's my, that is my prediction for the World Series. And I was talking to uh, a couple of friends that apparently looked into the viewership numbers and comparing these new numbers to the World Series of the 80s. And I'm all, why are you doing that? It's the 80s. Of course, viewership is going to go through the roof because it's the fucking 80s and there's not shit to do. (laughs) <laughs> That's this is all that is going on right now. You don't have you don't have TikTok, you don't have all of the social medias, you don't have streaming services. It, right. It's literally the and only thing one way to watch it. So it's a lot easier yeah. to track. Yeah. But apparently in the 80s, the viewerships for those World Series is series were in the 30 millions or something ridiculous. And they're like, oh yeah, no, we're not even gonna sniff that at all. Of course not. We're not going to fucking sniff. That is, what are we doing right now? I'm so confused. But I do think, though, this overall World Series, and I hope that it goes seven games. I hope it goes seven games and it is going to be a bloodbath, a literal bloodbath, because I actually think, and we'll get into comparing bullpens and lineups and all that bullshit. We'll do that in a minute. But I literally think that it's going to be high scoring games. I hope so, because the playoff games have been, they have a lot to live up to from just the playoff Mm -hmm. games that we've seen so far. I would say the Dodgers and the Mets series was probably the least 
exciting and it was still very exciting it just they didn't play yeah. as close of games and as back and forth of games as all of the other series so can you imagine if we get to this point and america's teams i say in quotes because they're not my <laughs> teams but america's not teams, my team mother mm-hmm. the teams that everybody wants to see except for us and a lot of other baseball fans finally make it to the world series can you imagine if they don't live up to the tone that has been set from all of the other series thus far so i completely agree with you I hope there's seven games because we only get at most seven games of baseball left for right. many months to come. And and so I will consume as much of it as I possibly can. It's been weird that we've gone this whole week without baseball. How do you think that's going to affect this series as well? Do you think we're going to see maybe a couple strong pitching duels for game one and game two because the offense is going to have to click back in and the pitchers are well rested? I don't know. Game one starters. Jack Flaherty for the Dodgers, Garrett Cole for the Yankees. Honestly, I think it's going to be very similar lines for the both of these teams. I think they're going to go like four and a third, and mm-hmm. they're both going to give up four runs. Okay. And I think they're going to get knocked out real early. And now watch, Jack Flaherty is going to go seven and strike out ten, and he's going to be like, fuck you, CZ, watch what I can do. I can see he had a, a shitty start last time. I could see him, like, really coming back. Locking back in. and Well, and I think with some extra rest, I think everybody's going to have a little bit more zip on their fastball. And I just, I want it to be a bloodbath. Let's just be really honest. I love pitcher's duels, but I want it to be a bloodbath. I need to see Freddie Freeman with his bum ankle hitting a three run bomb. God. I, I, that's... Okay. My ankle hurts when Freddie Freeman <laughs> runs, right? Oh man. When he jumped up to catch that little fly ball or whatever. And he came down and he like yeah. wobbled. Oh, just, I threw up a tiny bit in my mouth when it actually happened. And I'm all, Oh my God, Freddie Freeman, please be okay. And then he didn't play the next game after that. You know that he had to be in some serious pain. In oh, order for him to sit out. All kinds of stuff too. Mm-hmm. And he's still that obviously in pain. I do worry about how it's going to affect him past this season. And I'm sure there will be a lot of speculation about that once this is all over because mm-hmm. he's not 25 years old. And that's what happens to us when right. we're not the time anymore. Freddie, yeah. let me tell you, you just don't bounce back the same way. But I guess for his sake, I am glad that they made it. And that is another reason. I'm just going to keep trying to pull out reasons of why I, I have to root for one te- one of these teams. Just one, yeah, maybe no. someday, mm-hmm. somehow. And that is another, that's another reason that I would say I would root for the Dodgers because, yeah, imagine if he did all of this and he's never quite the same again, but he was able to push through it for maybe the last chance in his career at a World Series. Maybe. I just, I can't. Clayton Kershaw, you are a, just a dumbass because you keep pushing this fucking narrative of, again, that the best one-two combo at the beginning of a lineup is Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman, but they cheated. Newsflash, Clayton Kershaw, when you faced them in 2017, when that whole thing went down, it was George Springer. George Springer was leadoff. The only time that Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman was 1-2 was like this season for a little bit. Not even a full, not even the full season because Jordan was number two. Susie, you know Clayton Kershaw has like fully blacked out during all of his postseason appearances. So I it's just really can't expect anything. And I, I shouldn't expect people to have rational thought processes on this. I, I should know better because it's the fucking internet. And I should just know that they're going to pick whatever the fuck narrative fits whatever is in their brain. But I'm all, no, literally, I'm not even saying this because I'm an Astros fan. It wasn't a thing. It was not a thing. So you can be mad all you want, Clint Kershaw, but it's not, I don't know why you're mad. Anyways, as you can tell, I'm a little hot under the collar. If I had a collar, I'd see it. <laughs> No. And the Dodgers have Joe Kelly, and even mm. though he's not even on, yeah, he's not gonna be on the roster. It's okay, but he's still there, and he's still gonna get a ring if they win. Yeah, I don't know. I think I give the, I can't give, I can't give the edge. I can't give the edge to either one of these teams. I like I said, I don't want either one of the teams to win. I just want specific players to do well. Yeah, no, I think we're gonna have to go really game by game because we have what, Friday tomorrow is the first game, then there's a game on Saturday, then they're off to travel. So we'll probably, we'll, we'll definitely record again and be back with you mid-series and we can yeah. give our predictions and dive into to the second half of the series at least. But yes, we've got game one, we've got Cole and Flaherty, and then game two is going to be Radon versus Yamamoto. I'm going to take Dodgers in game one and Yankees in game two. 
That's what I'm thinking. Because okay. I'm relying on a gem. But I think Yamamoto is only going to go a few innings and get a little blown up the next day. Okay, let me let me tell you this little fun fact and see if this sways you either way. Okay. So do you know who has the best numbers against right-handed pitching? Which team? Dodgers, Yankees. Oh, I would guess the Yankees, but I really don't know. Yes, they do. They have the best numbers against right-handed pitching. And do you know who just crushes lefties? Like a player or Dodgers. Which team? No. Oh, okay. Which team? The Dodgers. Okay. okay. The Dodgers are yeah. So I case, I've picked exactly the opposite, really. <laughs> yeah. So but I- both of the Dodgers pitchers are right-handed pitchers. But uh, Rodone. Yeah, I don't know. I think Rodone had a little chat with Lance Lynn this past week. Like, I just feel like he's, I don't know. I feel like he's going to rise to the occasion. I don't think Gary Cole's going to get blown up or anything. I just think, I just really want Jack Flaherty to have a start. Because again, if we're talking about what we personally want out of these series, Jack Flaherty is one of those players that I want to see have some success. And that's, so that's what I'm going to hope for. Going fully on vibes, emotions. I like it. Speaking of vibes. How did we have two teams that don't have any fucking mascots in the goddamn World Series? How did this happen? happen? Now, for that reason alone, it should just absolutely not be allowed. <laughs> right? Why? I just, yeah, I don't understand. Did the Dodgers ever have a ma- mascot? These are one of the questions that I, I'm like, maybe it was before Baseball Susie that in the olden days, did they have a mascot? I don't know. The Yankees are just apparently too cool to do any of the fun things. So... Yes, you know. the Yankees full on hate fun. I think we know that the Yankees absolutely hate fun and the Dodgers try to be fun, but are not very good at it. Look at their second shot at a city connect uniform. It's some a people Pop-Tart. like to look like funfetti pop tarts. Kels, I mean that some people, some people's that would be fun. The, the name is literally in it. Funfetti. They said, you know what? Instead of actually being fun, we'll just dress up like this just saying so that's what i mean they're like they're trying a little too hard and the yankees just straight up do not try at all because one of the things that i actually like particularly have been reminded that makes me not a huge fan of the yankees because listen i love new york city and i don't love the mets either particularly this year different story i right. totally brought in like i think when i was living in new york years ago i would have absolutely picked the yankees every single day twice on tuesday like over the Mets right but Uh I think I've just grown more irritated by the fact that they they have this entitlement about them and the more times I've gone to the stadium especially recently I'm just like you're not even trying to make this special you just can charge twice as much as everywhere else and say it's like historic and blah 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 just because you're in New York City and the weird thing about that is that Nothing else exists in New York City without being the best of the best. If the Thai food on the corner is not the best, it's literally not going to exist in New York City because everything is so heavily competitive there. So it just pisses me off that they're like, we're the Yankees and we've just always been here and we've built this stadium and we don't have to like actually, there's so many things they're not doing that other stadiums are doing for the fan experience and just the aesthetic alone and like stuff around the stadium. I don't know. Like I really want to be into it because I love New York city and I I actually had the chance to be put in a lottery to win free tickets through my work to go to the world series. If the Yankees were in it and I didn't even put myself in the lottery because I was like, I don't want to suck it up to drive there and be in all the, you know, we went recently. It's just right. not that enjoyable of an experience. So, but then you could have sold it on StubHub or no, TickPick or whatever correct. and I, gotten yeah. four thousand dollars legitimately. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you about that number, guys. Have you guys seen? Have you seen the World Series ticket well, prices? That's the other thing. Is yes, because these are the two teams specifically that are in the World Series. There's less and less people that are <laughs> that it's like accessible to go to the World Series, and it's you know only a very specific demographic of people who are even going to be able to afford to go to the world series which is always a thing but it's even more extreme right. because we're in new york and la yeah i don't know why i was shocked when i saw some of these ticket prices oh because gosh. it is new it's york bad. yankees and the la dodgers however it was put into perspective when i saw the prices of taylor swift concert tickets <laughs> and yeah i guess you can't really be too shocked if you compare it to something like that exactly taylor swift will tour again so 
the fact that it's yeah. not a once in a lifetime event, there's no fucking way I'm paying six thousand dollars for a Taylor Swift ticket. Even if I did like her music, absolutely not. Right. But we say, oh, it's the Dodgers and it's the Yankees. We haven't had this matchup since what 1981. Apparently, I wasn't alive. You definitely weren't alive. Yeah. yeah. It was a whole different era of baseball. Speaking of, when I watched that 04 documentary about the Red Sox. Yeah. How did they have a whole ass fucking brawl on the field and only two players get ejected? How, Those are the how days. do you throw Those a manager days. down? <laughs> and full on fisticuffs. It's not any of this like shoving and pushing. No, like full on fists being thrown and only two players get ejected. I was like, holy shit it's a it is it was a whole other era of baseball because they yeah. are literally holding signs saying we hope you die pedro what? this the documentary was a wild if this is the first time you guys are tuning into a bourbon and baseball episode you should know that i only became a baseball fan in 2018 so there are lots of things about baseball which i re refer to as before baseball Susie. so i'm trying to learn oh four the yankee red sox rivalry that that was a that's a whole ass fucking movement. I was all, yeah. oh, that's you're really you're really sp spray painting, fuck the Yankees on the sides of cars. They had to have police in riot gear in one of those games. I was all, oh, it's a for real fucking thing. Like what today's games could never. Yeah, but for personal safety reasons, I think we can be grateful for that. But the vitriol, there are many Yankees and Red Sox fans that actually hate seeing Derek Jeter and David Ortiz and Alex Rodriguez like all together on TV now because they want them to hate each other and they want them to just like still have that narrative and go near, nowhere near each other. So also, I was super shocked that A-Rod was going to be a Boston Red Sox. I was like, hold on. Hold, what, did I miss something? He was a Yankee. I had to Google it. I had to figure it out. And then the whole deal fell through. I'm all, what? If you follow the Bourbon and Baseball Twitter account, I was tweeting out my live thoughts while watching this. And I was just shocked. All of the shock. So much shock and awe. I need to watch it because I was very young at that time. But obviously there's a specifically brutal ending for me as a Cardinals yes. fan that I, I know is coming. as that documentary. So that's why I haven't checked it out yet. But I'm sure it's fantastic. I'm sure it's worth the watch. For, and because I certainly don't remember the extent of the intensity of all of that because I was like 12 years old or something. Right. So 13. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it was a whole ass other era of baseball where Pedro literally sent two Yankees to the hospital in the same ambulance. What? Didn't get thrown out of the game. Nope. Just kept, on, kept right on pitching. And it was weird seeing them go seven eight innings not really me as a as an astros fan because our pitchers typically do try and get to the seventh inning but especially compared to the world series that we had bullpen games and starters not even going into the fifth inning seeing those being like i'm sorry pedro is going into the eighth what's happening right now because that's what you did back then i'm all oh my god it was wild it was fucking wild they're all fuck analytics we don't want to do any of that no <laughs> but I just didn't have it the same way and yeah I do miss that part of of the game and it is weird to adjust your mindset and just your fandom to watching a game to the like live or die tomorrow sort of mm -hmm. thing of the way that they play in these playoff games and it yeah it didn't used to be as extreme because your guys were still your guys and it is that dusty baker mentality that you hated last season of you prepare exactly the same way and you do what works because you know what works and uh, yeah it did work a little bit better back then it it was wild it, it does have a brutal ending for you as a actual cardinal fan but the vibes man the vibes if we for some reason was went back in time and we were this age back in 04 we would have been podcasting about the vibes oh yeah especially with kevin millar there calling themselves like idiots and just doing the whole thing. I'm all, I have questions, Red Sox fans. Did you guys love Kevin Millar? Did you love the vibes? Or did, were you like, Kevin Millar, I need you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. You bring up a good point that I think we were texting earlier this week about like how two teams got to the World Series that like really don't seem to have the vibes that we know are very important. And opposite of last season, because that the Diamondbacks and the Rangers had all the vibes and it was like straight high on vibes 
straight into the World Series. I don't know if we had to put these teams head to head on vibes above replacement. What vibes do the Dodgers have? They have Tyler Glass now with his impeccable hair. Yeah, and he's not to play. I know. He's I know. I, I'm trying to give them some brownie he points. He does have the best form baseball. Trying. You're okay. Best form baseball. Tyler Glass. Uh, apparently, they're doing the whole minor league bus ride camaraderie. Apparently, they're going to, uh, yeah. in the week off, they still went to the stadium without any like family or anything. And they essentially, I don't remember if it was like Max Muncy who said it or Tyler Glass now, but essentially, they were are locked in and are like, sorry, wife, kids, World Series is going on. I got to be locked in here after the World Series. I can be a good dad. I can be a good husband. But for right now, I got to be with the boys. And so they've been hanging out with the boys, which the baseball fan in me loves. Yeah. The actual mom wife part of me is like, oh, absolutely not. (laughs) What are we doing here? The baseball fan in me, however, is, oh, no, give me all that fucking energy because how locked in are you? I'm torn, obviously, because it's the Dodgers. But the fact that they are all being locked in like that, taking the bus rides. I can't remember if it was a whole plane ride with just the boys and the wives and kids, families went on a separate plane. But I feel like that may have been a thing. Dodgers fans, if for some reason you were here, please fact check me on that. Put it in the comments and tell me because I feel like I heard that. I could be I wrong. Did see, I, yeah, I saw something along the lines of what you're talking about, of things that they were doing, specifically those kinds of team building like things, which I brings me to the point that I do genuinely think like the Dodgers as a team are more like cohesive in terms of mm-hmm. vibes. I think they just genuinely like each other more than like the Yankees like each I other. I think so, yeah. As a whole. I think Dave Roberts is a vibe. How do you feel about Dave Roberts? Because I love it. Also. Dave Roberts was on the Red Sox, and I had no fucking idea. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have a fucking clue. Dude, also, he's still a dude. I, yeah. N- did not have a clue. And also, I have to be partial, a little bit partial to Dave Roberts because Asian. But with the managers, I think I do give the edge to Dave Roberts over Air Boots. Let, okay, so let's break it down. Let's break it down between managers, starting rotation. Infield, outfield. Bullpen. Bullpen, yeah. And then do the lineup like lineup. Yeah. Okay. So between the managers, Aaron Boone also, and I feel gross saying this, but Aaron Boone as a younger man, I was like, Oh, hi, Aaron Boone. Okay. Look at you, sir. (laughs) Yeah. The Boone jeans are strong. Yeah. I was a little shocked. Anyhow. So between Dave Roberts and Aaron Boone, I have to give the edge to Dave Roberts. So I guess point Dodgers. Yep. I agree. On the same page there. Starting rotation. Who do you think are we wait, hold on. Are we giving them points for vibes and then actual baseball ability? I think we've got to combine those two things together and just give them one overall one above the other. Damn it. Okay. Because okay. the the lack of vibes have gotten them this far. So <laughs> this is this is true. Okay. So starting rotation, I think I gotta I don't know. I think I gotta I don't know. They're both cringe. Let's just put it that way. They they're both are. Cringe. They are. They're both cringe. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. But I do I think, think I the Yankees probably have an edge because they have more. I'm sorry, what? I think the Yankees probably have an edge because I think they have more actual starting pitchers. And the Dodgers bullpen did such an incredible job in the CS, but they had to work. And they had yeah. this come off, but just it, to be able to do again what they did in the CS, like that, it would be absolutely incredible if they could replicate that. So I don't, I don't know. Okay. Let me, let's flush this out. So we got Jack Flaherty, Yamamoto. Who's their, who's the Dodgers third? That's it. <laughs> Those are their starting pitchers. No, that, there's a third. <laughs> those are their two starting pitchers michael kopak is gonna be like i know that they have to do a bullpen game which game five is the is circled on our calendars and i think game five is going to be decisive because it's back to back and that's the bullpen game i'm all after two days of no rest so circle game five on your calendars y'all okay so jack flaherty yamamoto Walker Bueller, I guess. Walker oh, Bueller. There we go. Walker Bueller. Actual third. But I don't really count him. 
I, I would count his start as a <laughs> probably a bullpen start too. Yeah. And then the actual like bullpen versus yeah. we got Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon, Clark Schmidt, Luis Heal. And I don't think they're going to let Marcus Stroman sniff a mound. <laughs> Maybe in long relief, if they're getting shelled, possibly. Like he could be the long man out of the pen, but he's yeah. not going to start a game. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't think so, but it's hard. It probably depends on how the series shakes out, too, where they're at by okay. the time they get to game five. I don't know. And then we got Garrett Cole with his Kermit voice. Carlos Rodon with his Garrett Cole is almost like too wholesome for me. I know that's like such a weird thing to say, especially coming from me because I love the wholesomeness, but there's something like, I don't know. I just want, we love like how wholesome Luke Weaver is. And I'm trying to think of there's a John Brebbia is another great example who has a similar persona to Luke Weaver, but they've still got a little bit of an edge to them and a little bit of, I don't know, both self deprecating and also just like super sarcastic sense of humor I'm like missing that. I need I need a little bit of an edge from Garrett Cole. 2019 Garrett Cole had had the edge with the hair and the beard. Maybe and that's it. He lost his hair and his beard and Yankees, please. I beg of you to stop with the hair and the mustache. Oh yeah, I, I don't know. I can, I don't think I I'm not I don't love either one of these starting rotations. I think ability-wise, I think the Yankees have a better starting rotation. I can't give either I can't give either rotation points on vibes. So we'll just go with baseball ability and I think I give it to the Yankees because they have more starting pitching. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so that's uh one point for the Dodgers for the manager, one point for the Yankees for the starting rotation. Okay. So bullpen. Luke Weaver in and of itself, in and of himself, yes. gets extra points just because he's Luke Weaver. However, that mishmash of outcasts from literally yeah. the White Sox and the Dodgers. <laughs> great on you that who is their pitching coach? Matt Blake is the Yankees pitching coach. The Yankees pitching coach. That sounds right. I think that's it. So uh, Matt Blake is a I don't know what type of black magic he possesses, but congratulations, sir, for doing the things that you have done. But I got to give it to the Dodgers bullpen because the Dodgers bullpen is fucking nasty. Yeah. Blake Trinan, what the actual fuck, Blake Trinan? You were just unfair. Just so unfair. He's gross. And Vesia, I think Alex Vesia is coming off the IL. And I think Brewster Gratterall is coming off the IL. And th both of those are just gross as well. So I'm all, mm -hmm. oh, look at you, Dodgers bullpen, just picking up all of the things. And they have Evan Phillips in there, Michael Kopech, who you mentioned earlier. I, and then even the random guys. Like Ben Kasparius. You're all I'm sorry, who the fuck is Ben Kasparius? Oh, just a guy who got what five five outs, four outs in the CS and locked that up. I had no idea who that fucking guy was. And then there's Brent Honeywell. And now I have to give extra vibe points to the bullpen for the Dodgers bullpen because Brent Honeywell is a guy that did not care that he was not on the roster. That was like, you know what? I'm gonna pitch and I'm gonna do all the things and threw BP to Mookie Betts and got Mookie Betts right. Did you hear that story? No, I didn't. Yeah, apparently on a on an off day, he threw to Mookie Betts and told Mookie Betts that he was going to throw it down the middle and to hit it as fucking far and as fucking hard as he could. And he got Mookie Betts right. And that's not in Brent Brent Honeywell's. I keep saying Brent Honeywell's words. That is Max Muncie. Hmm. So Brent Honeywell over here is just being humble and just being a guy. And the fact that he ate four innings in that game versus the Mets and saved the bullpen. And if he's if he's out there for one out or if he's out in there for four innings, he will do whatever the fuck. And he has like a screwball. That's fun as fuck. Who has a screwball? Yeah, every, every bullpen needs a guy like him. I agree. It's not He's not going to get a ton of flashing lights and attention when he comes in. And you might not even be super excited to see him come in a game given the circumstance that he might come into. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he certainly adds value. And now I, I would say those with that story, a little bit of vibes. Yeah. And, and Max Muncy just literally un, I was going to say unprovoked. That's not the right 
connotation for that word there. That's not what I wanted. They literally didn't even ask Max Muncy about Brent Honeywell. Mm -hmm. Max just unapologetically was like, let me tell you about this motherfucker. This motherfucker right here. He is awesome. He is. And I was like, oh, all right. And I don't want to like Max Muncy, but I have to like Max Muncy for giving credit where credit is due to the random nameless bullpen guy. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes when you ask who are the unspoken leaders on your team, that's one of my favorite questions. And there is always a guy that comes up right off the top of their heads that is never someone that we would think about. That you think of. Yeah. I don't know. I, but now that Bruce Stargatterall and Alex Vesey are coming off the IL, is Brent Honeywell going to be one of those guys that gets bumped off? We don't know. Mm -hmm. The rosters have not been set, right? Unless I miss the rosters, which could be entirely possible. Have you seen any rosters set? I have not. I don't know if they have been. I don't think they have been set yet. I don't think they have been. So again, we're recording Thursday night before the World Series, obviously, starts on Friday, depending on when you guys listen to this. I don't think the World Series rosters have been set. We will see if Brent Honeywell makes the cut or if it is indeed Ben Kasparius that gets the heave-ho. I want to say that there's one more guy on that roster, though, that got a couple of innings Anthony in Bondo was in the CS too, wasn't he? He was, but that's not the one that I'm thinking of. It's mm. a, it's like a younger, it's a younger guy, but I don't remember because I remember I, hearing Bondo's wasn't name. Was there talk that season. Tony Gonsolin was going to potentially be? I think there that. was. I think there was, but it got halted because there was some sort of, I think, tightness or discomfort. One of those buzzwords. So I don't think he is going to pitch. And if for some reason you guys thought that Shohei was going to come in and pitch, Dave Roberts has put the kibosh on that. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie, a tiny baseball part of me would love to fucking see that. But sure. The larger overall mom. The baseball fan in me who also for- wants to watch him ever again. For- like, yeah, yeah I'm like, not. no, absolutely not. You cannot do that. And for those people that are like, oh, but he's throwing bullpens. Bullpens are much different than actual World Series innings, people. That's not, mm-mm, no, absolutely not. And it was, oh, what if he, what if the Dodgers are up like 14 to one in the ninth? Are you going to bring him? No. Even no. less of a reason. Absolutely the fuck not. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. I'm really glad that Dave Roberts shut that down, actually, because. Yeah. I've been just trying to ignore it. I've, all the whispers of it that have been happening for weeks and weeks. And no. yes, no, we can wait for a healthy show. Hey, his rehab from Tommy. Er, sorry, we're not calling it Tommy John, whatever it is. The elbow surgery known as Tommy John. Yeah. The rehab from that is a full time job in itself. And clearly he's been uh, doing some other things full time as well. So, yeah, I, I think they would be nothing but overly cautious about that. At this point in time, even with how desperate they might be for pitching. For pitching. Yeah. No, no absolutely no. not. Okay. So I think we give the Dodgers, I would give the Dodgers bullpen the edge, but it really just depends on their utilization. And if Brent, if Brent Honeywell is on the actual roster, point Dodgers. That there, There's my caveat. There's my caveat. If Brent Honeywell is on the actual World Series roster, point Dodgers. If not, all of the points to luke weaver essentially yeah oof that's a good point because i would say in terms of yeah the middle inning guys and even like the setup guys i would give it to the dodgers but i yeah luke weaver is the closer that has my heart yeah Mm. if we're talking strictly baseball ability the dodgers definitely have a stronger bullpen there's no two ways about it i'm so sorry yankees bullpen you can say what you'd like yankee fans you can say what you'd like but at no point in time are you going to take Tim Hill or Mark Leiter Jr. over, I yeah. don't know, say, Blake Trinan and Alex Vesia. You're, it's, you're not going to do it. You're not. That's, I'm just saying, that's not, and everyone's, oh, Clay Holmes. Really? No. No. Like, we can start listing the bullpen and see what you guys really think. So there's my caveat. If Brent Honeywell is on the World Series roster, point Dodgers. If not, all of the points to the Yankees because I love Luke Weaver who apparently wants to be an underwater basket weaver. And I just, I can't, I can't with him. 
sir, I'm going to need you to not be as adorable. And he has, he's a girl dad. I can't. Yeah. He's like the most fun thing about the Yankees easily. Easily. Mm. Yeah. Between him and Jazz, man. Between him and-, and Jazz is a vibe. What kind of a vibe is Jazz? It depends on the day. Depends yeah. on the motherfucking day. All right. We got to put these lineups head to head because ultimately I do think we're going to see, like you said, some serious offense, maybe some real high scoring games. You've got Otani and Mookie Betts. And I'm sorry, I love you, Freddie Freeman, but especially injured. I'm just going to I'm just going to plug Tommy Edmond in there as part of the big three for the Dodgers instead. Why wouldn't you put the NLCS MVP in that fucking cleanup exactly. hitter? Exactly. Tommy Edmund. We've got cleanup hitter Tommy Edmond. As everyone wrote it up, and by everyone we mean me and only me. Because yes. Susie, how long have I been saying? And here's the thing: I think Cardinals fans are all like, "Of course he was an LCS MVP," because that's what always happens when the Cardinals trade away players. That is not why <laughs> I knew Tommy Edmond would be an LCS MVP. I knew he would be an LCS MVP because he's an MVP, especially in clutch games. And when you put him surrounded by players who can actually elevate his at-bats, he's going to step up and do it for you. And he's actually one of the few players that I think thrives on showing up every day and not worrying too much about where he's at in the lineup, where he's out on the field. Like he is able to just go with the flow and mm-hmm. that makes him so valuable. But I, I think that's a big way that he stays out of his head and is able to just be in the moment and be a postseason MVP. Absolutely, because after trying to maneuver and navigate between Shohei and Mookie and Freddie Freeman, they're like, oh, we don't have to worry about Tommy Edmund. <laughs> JK, Tommy Edmund says, the fuck you don't. And then just hits bombs. Kelsey hits knew. bombs, drives and runs. I knew it. Kelsey knew. Oh. Kelsey fucking knew. Yes. Honestly, if we're talking about lineups, I actually think the Dodgers have a deeper lineup. Oh, yeah. Non superstars. Yes. I think are. Uh, Yeah, because they have, we're talking about Tommy Edmond, but they have Kike Hernandez. They have Andy Pajes. They have even their catcher and Will Smith towards the bottom of their lineup. As much as Muncy. Even Chris Taylor. Max Muncy has, yeah, like they can plug and play, I think, a little bit more than the Yankees can. And. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is obviously some serious validity to the way that they have built half of their roster with these plug and play guys. Yes. Yeah. And I, mm, Yankees, what are we doing with Jason Dominguez? Is he literally just there to run? For, I keep forgetting for... that he's there. He came in the other night and I was like, wait, what? The Martian is here? Yeah, to pinch run. And I get it. I understand that he is a literal baby rookie, but why is he on this roster? To pinch run for Big G when he gets on base in the ninth. If we're going to line these up with Anthony Volpe, who has been actually doing pretty well and having better at bats, but Anthony Rizzo has been hurt. And did you hear the his statement on his hand basically swells up after the games? And he's like, yeah, we're just going to have to see how that goes. If I can get the swelling done. His hand ballooned up after the games that he played because he has two broken fingers. Listen, I'm very sorry to hear about that. I don't want anyone to be hurt, but I hate Anthony Rizzo. So I don't <laughs> need to see him do anything in the postseason. He is probably my least favorite Yankee. <laughs> now, is that a deep-seated Cubs hate or what? where is this hatred coming no, from? completely objective. I just, I personally know him. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fair. That is fair. Uh, no, it's definitely a Cubs thing, but okay. I just never, I just don't dig his persona from what I've seen of him either. But yes, I, I hold his past against him. Actually, he's not my least favorite Yankee. Alex Verdugo is definitely my least favorite Yankee for, for more. I legit. So yeah. Legit forgot that Alex Verdugo was on the Dodgers. I did too. Totally. I, I saw that. and I was like, oh, oh, that's right. He was completely forgot about the uh, the Alex Verdugo Dodger and that whole storyline that they traded Alex Verdugo for Mookie Betts or a part of the trade it wasn't a one-for-one people I know I know yeah yeah and that was the the, one of the other storylines the whole Jack Flirty was going to be a Yankees Mm -hmm. but then the Yankees were like JK we see your medicals we don't like what we see Mm -hmm. so Dodgers were like what a slightly roughed up pitcher come on over bring it Yeah. yeah Yeah. Can we're just gonna work our little devil magic? We just need you for this. 
Can you just, can you last through the playoffs? That's all we need you for. That's okay. I think I'm going to have to give the lineup depth to the Dodgers, point Dodgers. Vibes, I don't know. Are we going to see some tip to tip action from any of the Yankees players? I don't think so. I, like I said before, I just don't think that there is that brotherhood, if you will. I don't think there's the camaraderie that exists as tightly or amongst as many of the players on the Yankees as there is with the Dodgers. Okay. Okay. Although I want to say that I saw it didn't get turned into a, a major gif, but I want to say that I saw a, a little hip thrusting action with a Yankee and I don't remember which one. Hmm. But I have seen some very elaborate handshakes and celebrations going on between like Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. I'm all, uh. are we practicing these? I feel like we have to be practicing these because there are 43 steps. That's when I need Scotty Braun to ask one of these players next time on, on yeah. foul territory. I need to know how these home run sellies are being thought up and discussed because I can only imagine Juan Soto and Aaron Judge in the locker room being like, okay, here. This is what we're going to do. We're going to yeah, do three really hand claps, before. right? And then one of, one of these, and the, I need to know. that These are the things that I need to know. Even though the Yankees have Juan Soto, which, did you know that he's only 25, Kels? He's going to be 26 on Friday. Did you what? know that? Yeah. His birthday's on Friday. He's only 26, Kels. He's only 26, and he's heading for mm -hmm. agency, and he's going to make $500 million. I did hear that. I have heard yeah. whispers in the night. Yeah. So if Glaber stays red hot and working, I don't know, lead off Glaber is a whole other animal than yeah. Glaber in any other role. So Yankees, don't move Glaber off of lead off. That's not, don't do that. But I think between all of the depth for the Dodgers, I think I'm going to have to give it to the Dodgers. I think all I of their players have a higher ceiling, I guess, than yes. than the Yankees. And I honestly think like more versatility too. They're the, just the way that they can stack their lineup depending on the matchup and stuff too. I didn't even mention Teoscar Hernandez, who I, I do really think Teoscar is another, is a vibes guy. So yeah. he's another guy. Give some points there for, yeah. Kike is, he is a whole vibe, just himself, just with the dancing yeah. and all the things. I think the only person on that Yankees lineup that has even half the vibes of Kike is like Jazz. But again, depending on the day, depending on the day, because at no point mm. in time are you going to see Aaron Judge over there hip thrusting. That's another thing. No, no, and that's OK. But yeah, again, little, it's more about how they all fit together. Yeah, it's yeah, more about how they all fit bit. together. And I think even the most wholesome guys on the Dodgers or even the more straight laced, less personality driven guys on the Dodgers are rising to the occasion and being a part of the fun. Yeah. So. Let's talk about rising to the occasion, Kels. And the aforementioned 25-year-old Juan Soto. He's going to be 26 on Friday. There's whispers that there is going to be a bidding war for mm -hmm. Juan Soto. Oh, I'm sure there will be. I Let me tell you where I think, or let me tell you what I think plays out for Juan Soto and this whole free agency. If the Yankees win the World Series, Juan Soto is as good as gone. I do not think Juan Soto is going to resign with the Yankees. I think that baby Steinbrenner is not like daddy Steinbrenner, is not going to give all the money. And I think he has a number in mind that he's not going to go past. And I think he is banking on the fact that Juan Soto just loves being a Yankee, just loves that title, that allure of being a New York Yankee. I think he is banking on the fact that Juan Soto wants to be a Yankee and is going to take some sort of discount. I say discount, like a relative discount. I'm not, yeah. I realize if the Dodgers win, I think then that level for Juan Soto, baby Steinbrenner is willing to pay, goes up. That is my guess. I think he's going to make $600 million. I would not see, be surprised. And the main reason that I could agree with you there is that was actually going to be my question for you. Is you do you think it depends on, or if they win or lose, is that a factor in this? But the main reason that I could see it going exactly that way is that I fully believe the Mets have a lot of money coming off the books. And even when they didn't, we saw how willing Steve Cohen was to, to put it all out there. And 
yeah, I think he's already got a very solid playbook on how he's going to be insanely aggressive and will do whatever he can to one up the Yankees, uh, especially given how their season ended. They could so I, yeah. close taste it. Yeah. Do you think the Philly, you still think the Phillies are going to be a major player or are they just going to be sniffing around to make it more interesting? If Scott Boris is Scott Boris and we know that he is. I guarantee you he's going to use Philly as a stock horse. He's going to be like, Philly has this offer on the table. What? How are you going to? I honestly think Uncle Stevie, though, is going to be like, fuck all y'all. Juan Soto. Yeah, how much you I want? do too. Do you think we're going to have to wait until fucking March <laughs> to, to see it all play out? Absolutely. fucking cool. Absolutely. fucking Absolutely. We're going <laughs> to. Are you kidding me? This is going to be a major fucking storyline every week of the offseason. There is going to be whispers of, oh, did you hear Juan Soto is going to is going to be a Dodger? Hey, Oscar only signed a, a one year deal. Okay. Do you think Juan Soto is going to be a, a Dodger? He said that he wanted to play with Shohei. OK. <laughs> yeah, I am just remembering even back when he before he was traded from the the Nationals to the Padres and then again from the Padres to the Yankees. I remember thinking like how insane it must be to be him. He, your yeah. name is on everyone's lips, just constantly in 12 different directions. Yeah. And yeah. I saw someone say, can you imagine turning down $440 million and it being a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. But so I totally had forgotten that Nationals contract that he was offered 15 15 years for $440 million. A lot of that was deferred. And that's mm -hmm. why he didn't take it. Mm -hmm. And there has been some whispers that the Nats may be in on him again and will be willing to give him more money up front. Oh, man. So, he, he has openly said how much he loved it there. So mm -hmm. that would but be. I, honestly, I think it's going to be the Mets. If the Yankees win. Mm-hmm. I think he's as good as gone, and I think he's going to be a Met. I could see it. I, so we'll see how that, that all plays out. But there's going to be lots of off-season free agent topics that, that we will dive headlong into. Yeah, but, one of the first things that comes up is, I think there's five days after the World Series for teams to pick up offers, team options. Mm -hmm. We'll see. And yep. do the players have that same window? I think so. I believe so. Yeah. And then so, there are qualifying offers that need to go out to right. the various players. And that got upped this season. I want to say it's 21.3 million, I think. I think that's right. qualifying. Yeah. It does go up. I think last season was like 20 something. Yeah. I so think. that will be something that really sets the stage for free agency and for all the offseason action. So yeah, we'll be <laughs> diving into that by this time next week already. Yeah. So we will keep you apprised of all of the things. Don't you worry your sweet little bibbies about that. We will be here complaining about the Dodgers and Yankees. <laughs> um, honestly, though, it is, as a baseball fan, I hate it because it's the Dodgers and Yankees. But as a baseball fan, <laughs> we have always said we want to see the best players playing in the yeah. World Series, right? Yeah. How many times have we lamented that we've never seen Mike Trout in the fucking World Series? Yeah. And now we get arguably, what, five five future Hall of Famers? And we're, I'm not even talking about pitchers. I'm literally just talking about position players at this point. Right. It's going to be a bloodbath. And I want to see the back and forth, though. I don't want it to be like a boat race. I don't want the boat race games like the Dodgers and uh, Mets. I yeah. don't want those. I want it to be game five of the 2017 World Series, the back and forth 13 to 12 in extras. Give me all of that. Hell. I don't even fucking care. Do the trash cans. Do the fucking mics in the ceilings. All of it. All of it. All the Goldilocks balls. I'm going to put my tinfoil cap on. Here it is. <laughs> I think those Goldilocks balls are going to be in play. I think we are going to see some... I don't know if they need to be with the guys we got going out here. Can you imagine if Big G hits hits a ball fucking 500 feet that's gonna be that's gonna be cinema i'm gonna fucking love that yeah i guess you're right they could be pulling out all the stops to get those kind of record-breaking things there's with so as many, with as many eyes yeah that, there's that are gonna be on this game so many eyes on it already 
Mm-hmm. And but yes, with that comes the pressure to really capture the audience, not yeah. just for now, but for the long term. And let's be really honest, only die hard baseball fans love pitching duels. Right. Yeah, I, mean, that's that's true. I love it so much and I'm the only one. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Have you been at all frustrated with the way that that MLB specifically is highlighting Shohei Otani and Aaron Judge too, but I feel like it's Shohei like way more and everything they're posting about the World Series is just Shohei show. Or are you like, you know what? Obviously, he's the face of the game internationally as well as he just is who he is. And this is his moment in time. So give me all of it. The petty part of me that Yankee fans are so upset about the fact that they're not getting attention, which cracks me up as a petty motherfucker. I'm like, you're a Yankee. Are you fucking kidding me? You get all of the fucking attention. You get all the fucking stories written about you because, hi, you're the New York Yankees. The attention that has been placed on Shohei specifically, just, the as the kids like to say, they are glazing Shohei Otani. Oh, mm-hmm. I was like, it's, but it's true though. It's so true because you're not seeing, you're not seeing the, what, what was the caption that MLB put for Shohei's picture? Shohei stuns. Stuns at the, yeah. And it's just like Shohei being like very normal standard <laughs> Shohei. Just standing there with a bat. I'm all, yeah. What, what's happening like, right now? I'm today, or was this the same yeah. one at the beginning of the season? Yeah. Nothing special about it. Why? Why is that a caption? And that's all you saw was just Shohei. You didn't see any. Right. You didn't see Mookie. You didn't see Freddie. You didn't. I'm all. You do realize there is a billion dollars right there. A bill, like literally with a B. People, you can't put, fucking put Mookie up there. And shout out to Mookie for I don't know, swallowing your pride and just being like, hey, it's gonna help us win. But I don't know. I feel like if I was as competitive as Mookie is in literally everything because he's fucking good at all of the things that he does. You can have to feel like a, just a, a, a tiny part of him is my chop liver. Y'all see me over here. Yeah, I wonder how it feels on the inside. If it, if that attention and the hype around him, if they feel it as, as much as we're like experiencing it on the yeah. outside. I don't know. Because if Shohei wasn't there, I feel yeah. like Mookie would be the star that that gets that caption. Mookie stuns in fall. <laughs> yeah. what, you know, I, I don't know. Shout out to Shohei for parlaying all of the <laughs> parlaying and the gambling problems. You see what I did there? I, I didn't actually even mean to do that. No pun intended, but. Right. The fact that he has all of the fucking promotional deals and all of the brand deals. And yeah, I just I guess, can't even. I, just, I think. And I know this is what is different about baseball from other sports. And maybe it's part of a reason it's not as popular so to say as like football and even basketball especially outside of our country but it's not a one player sport if Shohei Otani could have the series of his fucking life and if the rest of his team doesn't also play well it doesn't matter and no one are looking at you right so I guess that's maybe what bothers me about it more than anything is I love the fact that baseball is such a team sport And to my point earlier, like you're seeing a different Tommy Edmond because of the players that he is surrounded by in that lineup. And I don't know. I think if you are really a fan of baseball or a way that you become a fan of baseball is by the whole thing, by watching the guys one through nine. So I don't know. I I got really sick of the little graphic down in the bottom being like, in eight batters, Shohei Otani is up. You don't want to, you don't want to know when when that's happening. People that are tuning in just for his at bat. And I, I love Otani as much as anybody, but apparently not because I'm not just tuning in for his at bat. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. The fact that he's putting up ridiculous numbers with runners on base, just maybe you do want to check in. If there's two guys on base, maybe you do want to check in if Shohei Otani is up. I just, I, I did find it slightly hysterical. It's one of those where you're all, are you literally not doing, can you do it for Juan Soto too? You can, are you going to do it for Judge? Are you going to do it for Mookie? I don't know. And he's literally the only, I guess you could say Stanton, but he's, he's only playing on one side of the ball. Like I could see, I guess, if he was both pitching and hitting. And I get that doesn't make him any less of an exciting player in a sense, but it does. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and the fact that this is the first time since, what was the 
Miggy and Buster Posey where the MVPs have faced off in the World Series? Oh, yeah. The presumed I mean, MVPs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And no disrespect to Buster Posey, but I feel like Shohei and Aaron Judge are a tiny bit bigger billing than yes. Buster Posey. And again, mm-hmm. no, no disrespect to Miggy. But it's one of those, you're all, oh, and then, I don't know. And then before then, it was like way before Baseball Susie. Both of Buster, Buster Posey and, and Mickey Cavs was that whole lot was a before Baseball Susie too. But I'm one of the few, and I feel like you as well, Kelsey, are one of the few people who would have, been, would have enjoyed a Guardians-Mets World Series much more than this. Absolutely. We said that last week, and... I stand by it. I keep trying to think now. I'm like, would you rather be seeing a Dodgers Guardians World Series where everyone would just be like, clearly it's going to be a Dodgers sweep? I don't know. Ideally, I would have loved to see a a Padres. Yeah. I don't don't know. Padres Yankees probably would have been electric, though. We're not going to lie. Or Padres Royals. That would have been so good. Yeah. No, so I, we were one of the few that were excited about Diamondbacks Rangers last season. Yes. We're yeah, weird. We're weird it. like that. And shout out to all the people that now finally are wearing the correct teams. Hats. Have you seen that that meme where it's like, it's the cool thing to wear a Dodgers hat or a Yankees hat, but not actually be a fan of the team, not even know oh, what it yeah. is. Like the hats. No, my, my friend who lives in New York, who just wears a Yankees hat because everyone does, even Yankees who hat. doesn't live in New York, she's, oh my God, everybody is like high-fiving me and saying, go Yankees every two minutes. I can't even walk around. I'm just wearing my green Yankees hat that I always wear because like I've had it for like ever and I just wear it as a hat to throw on set. I'm like, yeah, they're in the World Series and people actually care. So now- if you're wearing a Yankees hat, you have to like know what the fuck is going on at least a little tiny bit. It, yeah, it it cracks me up. I yay, yay baseball. That's <laughs> that is what I that's what I will be rooting for. All of the homers, forty three homers. I needed to look like a football scorer each game. <laughs> I needed to look like a bloodbath. That's what I need. Yeah, I want all the score changes back and forth and back and forth. And I want Tommy Edmond to be the World Series MVP, obviously. <laughs> I will take that. I will take that. However, I kind of want Big G to win it just so that Yankee fans will shut the fuck up about yes. wanting him off their team. Yes. Yeah. I, w- I loved that for him in the ALCS. But honestly, what if there's so many close games? Okay. If the Yankees do win the World Series, what I actually want is I want Luke Weaver MVP because I want there to be so many close games that they somehow just win because he's able to come in and actually lock it down for four of the set, four or five of the seven games. That's what I want. If the Yankees are going to win, I will give me Luke Weaver MVP. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. I will take that. That's fine. Because but, it comes with, inevitably, it comes with some really exciting close games. If that's going to yeah, happen. That is true. Let me ask you a question then, Kels. Because inevitably, this narrative is going to go out. When the lights are brightest, someone in that Yankees lineup apparently disappears. And that someone basically dragged the Yankees on his back through the regular season Mm -hmm. so if Aaron Judge doesn't do the things in the playoffs and only is regular season Aaron Judge Mm -hmm. and yet Big G obviously didn't have a great season but is a postseason Superman Mm -hmm. which do you think Yankee fans will look more favorably on Aaron Judge because they desperately want to you don't think his his whole narrative is going to be tainted, quote unquote, by oh he oh you're saying like in the playoffs he, if he doesn't if he does not yeah so Aaron Judge very good in the regular season yeah sucks in the postseason versus Giancarlo who kind of sucks in the regular season yeah but is but Superman yeah. in the in the postseason oh yeah no in that case they'll be like big G all day long that's one of the things and again I hate to generalize it's just what I'm seeing so if Yankees fans, feed me some more of the good stuff of the appreciation of the well-balanced baseball fan here because I know you're out there, but yeah, no, they're real quick to turn on you and forget about 162. When he was going for the home run record, there was literal booze yeah. during the postseason. And I'm all, 
that motherfucker just brought all of the things, broke a record for y'all. How are you booing him? Just, yeah. I was a little confused. Apparently that comes with being on the Yankees. They expect more out of you. Okay, sure. Stop booing Aaron Judge, people. That makes me sad. He's your captain. Stop it. Okay. I'm not going to give a prediction because I, again, legitimately don't want anyone to win. <laughs> I just want it to be yeah, a Yeah, I think we've been clear on what we want to happen. If we can have a say, which clearly we can't because nothing that we've wanted to happen has happened thus far. So all we can do That's is yeah. sit back and enjoy as much yes. as we can. Yay, Kevin Kiermeyer. Yay, Tommy Edman. Yay, Big G, Little G. Luke Weaver. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Teo. I think those I are really, my... I really oh, like Teo. Teo. Okay. His smile. Oh, he's so endearing. Yeah. And and he's a guy who could very well not be a Dodger next season. And he's just been sure. super gracious. Yeah. yeah. Why not okay. see something? Fun? We will we'll wrap it up with who do you think is going to be, besides the obvious, big guys, superstars? Who do you think is a difference maker in these lineups? I do think Tommy Edmond is going to, we're going to see him move around again. I don't think you'll always, you'll see him in the same spot in the lineup two days in a row. And so I anticipate him still being super effective, especially because he is not only is he driving in runners, but he's the guy who's getting on base. That's also scoring all the runs. And that's why you put him in different places in the lineup. I think if we can see Tay Oscar contribute at the level that Shohei Otani has, if you not even at the level, but if we can see him get going because he has had quiet, at least to see us. And yeah, that's just speaking straight from my heart too. Cause those are the two guys that, that I want to see. I think Mookie Betts is, is going to absolutely rise to the occasion and we'll see all the fireworks from him. You know what? My, one of my favorite at bats of this postseason so far, and I absolutely hate to admit it, was that at bat of Soto versus the Guardians. And I'm like totally blanking at who it was even against. Hunter Gaddis. Um, Yes, against Gaddis, because they said it perfectly on the broadcast, that it, the way that he was stalking him. And and I could watch that at bat over and over again because the outcome just seemed so inevitable. And man, if we get even another moment like that out of Juan Soto, I wouldn't be mad because he's just really fun to watch. And it's I have I can't think of another moment where I've just I've watched something and it felt so predictable. This guy knows exactly what he is not just wants to do, but what he is going to do. And right. if we can see another moment out of him like that, it would be mind blowing. But yeah, I think that bottom of the Yankees order, like they're going to need guys like Austin Wells to continue to pick Get it hot up. again. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If they're going to want to line up with the, the depth of the Dodgers lineup. Yeah, so I think my difference makers for the Dodgers is going to be Will Smith. I think if he can be locked back in and be that, and he, I think he hit a home run last game of the CS. Maybe it's two games. The fact that he looked like he had been turning it back on. So I think it's going to be if Will Smith and Chris Taylor, if those two can get on base in front of Shohei, I think that's going to be the difference maker right there. And I think the difference maker for the Yankees, I think is going to be, like what you said, I think it's going to be Austin Wells. So I think it really hinges on the fucking catchers. And Trevino, Jose Trevino, if... Uh, yeah, I was thinking, honestly, I'd like to see something come up for him because he's a guy that just hasn't really had his moment lately. And I, I like him overall as a player. Yeah. And I think Anthony Volpe. I think if Anthony Volpe can lock back in and he's I think he's been walking a bunch. He's been having some really good at bats and he's been fouling off a lot of shit. Those are my difference makers. Obviously, I think Glaber is going to be Glaber. And or I take that back. If Glaber is leadoff Glaber. There's that. But if Glaber gets moved, he's not going to be the difference maker. I don't know. I think he wears that mantle of leadoff hitter proudly. If it works, I agree. Don't mess with it. Who do you think overall is going to be the MVP? It's obviously going to be Tommy Edmond. But, obviously. You know, if it's not Tommy Edmond, then If it's else? not Tommy Edmond, I honestly, I don't know. I'm feeling like Mookie Betts is going to have just a really loud World Series. So he's my pick. If it's not Tommy Edmund, the obvious choice. Obvious. Yeah. 
All right, folks, we are going to wrap it up. If you agree, disagree, if you'd like to let us know if we've gotten any of the information wrong in the podcast, which quite possibly we have. Uh, yeah, Yankees us- and Dodgers fans, if they're here, they're going to be like, you have everything wrong. Pretty much. Hate pretty it. much. Yeah. It's not that we hate you. We just, we had other ideas um, in our heads, but we're going to, we're going to watch the baseball. We're going to appreciate it all. We promise. Yeah. As baseball fans, we are going to appreciate the good baseball. That is what we're going to do because overall we are baseball fans and I want all the runs. I want 94 runs a game. But Kelsey, if they would like to fight with you on the interwebs, where can they find you? Oh man, don't come to fight, but I am on the Twitter (laughs) at KBirdTweets, K-B-U-R-D, tweets, mostly just Tommy Edmund truthing these days. And then my solo podcast, Peace, Love, and Baseball is everywhere this podcast is at youtube all the podcast platforms so if you're not here you can find me over there definitely go check that out like this episode subscribe to our youtubes subscribe to kelsa's youtube and if you have not already given us a five-star rating on all of the podcast platforms what the fuck are you doing come on now write all of the nice words in our favorite friend podcast foul territory live show i typically am in those chats and kels i got the best comment the other day best compliment actually and it cracked me up and i just it rung in my head and i was like oh i gotta tell kelsey because it was hysterical and apparently one of the one of the guys in the chat a didn't know that i was a a girl didn't know that i was a a woman just saw her in a baseball obviously thought i was a guy and then the next day, after finding out I was a woman, came back and said, wow, you are actually know about baseball and are kind of funny. <laughs> and it cracked me up. And I was like, thank you. Question mark. And, it, and he didn't mean it like that. But I just mean, came across. This is and it why was, I can't live in those so chats funny. sometimes, Susie. It just gets to me because I take it immediately. It is what it is. Listen, one time when I was like 18 or 19 years old, I remember a guy told me that that women are either funny or pretty. They can't be both. So we know all the limiting beliefs that are out there. But it, it, that's, that we are, we that's are what here. I took offense to. That we were that I was only kind of funny. Motherfucker, I am hysterical. Thank you very much. Okay? Yeah, it clearly hasn't been around long enough. That's really what I took offense to, but really and truly, the good it's some good clean fun over there. And it does make me laugh when they finally realize that I am in fact uh, a lady nose ball, and they're like, "What?" You, if there were the cartoon balloons, the cartoon balloons would be there. But it, it cracks me up. But again, people, if you do subscribe, please let us know because I think we are up to 255 now, which we're steadily growing. And I think we are heading towards our 200th episode. Whoa, that's so many. Yeah. Um, Crazily enough, this podcast has been going for almost like two years now. And I just, or no, I think it was my our two year anniversary in August. Yeah. That's the two years for sure. You you can't get rid of us that quickly, guys. I don't. (laughs) We're gonna be we're gonna be talking about ball for years, literally, literally. Baseball, not those kind of balls. No, thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> not here. Yeah. In our next episode, though, Kels, I gotta ask you about the check swing, the automated check swing. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I'm almost that. like more excited for the off season at this point. I'm ready to get into all of the stuff. Off season, and- yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna yeah. bring back our forty man fines, mm. and I will do a much better job of clipping our forty man fines and putting those oh. out. That'll be fun because I will attempt to be more on the ball and do like a whole graphic for the 40 man find. Ooh, so and fun. I know, so right. I'm going to attempt, I'm going to attempt and give you that kind of content because hi, you need to know about the random guys. Did you know that our 40 man find Brenton Doyle, Brenton Doyle won the center fielder fielding yes, Bible did. award. If you were in on those off season episodes, you also would have known how amazing Brenton Doyle is in center field for the Rockies. Everyone's like, who the fuck is Brenton Doyle? Because not many people are checking out the Rockies, but you should. Again, people, do the reviews, write that, write the words, and give us a five-star rating. Follow us on all the social platforms, please and thank you. We appreciate you for being here. Kels, appreciate you for hanging out with us. And with that, we're going to say goodnight and yay, baseball! And record, maybe. <laughs>